الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه المعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهدي لا يوم الدين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان وجيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة فعلم ما لم تعلموا صدق الله العظيم My dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters <coughs> One of the great things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gifted to you and me and to every human being is, is the heart is the heart Heart is the most important thing in our body according to the teachings of Quran. Because if your heart is clean, then your deeds will be clean. If your heart is corrupted, then your deeds and amal will be corrupted and not acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put focus on clean hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places of Quran have addressed human beings to work on their heart. For example, you fasted in Ramadan, guarantee from Allah is that you will be forgiven, guaranteed. But there are exceptions. One exception is, is the Rasulullah used the word shahna. That if your heart has shahna, you will, your Ramadan fasting will not be accepted. What is that shahna? Shahna is grudge. That you have hatred, malice, grudge against people. You just hate people. You know, instead of loving people, you love to hate. <coughs> Although you are praying with them, you are praying in the same stuff, shoulder to shoulder. But your heart is full of shahna, grudge. Our Rasulullah alayhi wasalam mentioned that that person's nafil or fard, both acts will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all right right on his face no what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I accept deeds from that person Rabbahu biqalbin salim, who will do good deeds with a clean heart Wajaa Rabbahu biqalbin salim. here the word is qalb that if your heart is clean then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your deeds. In another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَهُمْ قُلُوبُ la يَفْقَهُونَ biha." That these people are such that their hearts are so corrupted that they, un they understand everything of the world. But when it comes to deen, their heart does not function. They don't understand anything about deen. But you talk about money, music, films, they understand everything. When it comes to deen, their heart is like blind, don't understand anything. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mandated upon us that we must cleanse our heart. Make sure that our heart is clean. We don't do shirk. We don't have the love of Ghairullah. We don't love Bidat. We don't hate people. We don't love money. We don't love our family members more than what we should love Allah and Rasul But for that, 
to happen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says work on your heart work on your heart in surah al ahzab ayah number 4th allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ma ja'ala allah li rajulin min qalbayn fi jawfi allah said that i have not created any human being with, with two hearts every human being is born with, with one heart what does it mean it means that in this heart you can inculcate the love of allah all the love of shaitan if allah had given let's say two hearts you would say okay the the heart on my right side <laughs> is dedicated to the love of allah but the heart on my left side is dedicated to shaitan So Allah said no this is not the case everybody has this one heart so now either you can love Allah or shaitan you cannot have both love at the same time my dear brothers and sisters one of the great sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam which had been discarded by by muslim for a long time right is the beautiful sunnah of pledging allegiance pledging your allegiance to a a sheikh to a waliullah meaning giving your hand in the hand of a pious person and saying that you know what i want to reform myself i need a spiritual guide a mentor I want to you know cleanse my heart for that I need a guide I cannot do it by myself I can't each time I try I slip I fall I need somebody to tell me what to do and I want guidance from that a mentor this brothers and sisters this act is called what bayat baya this tradition of our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahaba had been discarded by muslims since many ages reason for that is your ego my ego because when you go to a pious person A, a, a spiritual religious mentor first you have to kill your ego and we think that i don't need any mentor when it comes to my deen because i say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and i pray salah and everything so there's no need for any spiritual guidance so as a result each one of us each one of us is on his or her, her own there is no connection there's no guidance from a waliullah from a pious person of allah subhanahu wa taala how important bayat is quickly let's look into the sunnah and quran right brother sister when we look into the 23 years of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam life when a person will come to embrace islam rasulullah will not just give him shahada but along with shahada rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said will say you have to do bayat on my hand you have to pledge allegiance to me and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was given this noor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah could see the weaknesses in people so Rasulullah will give shahada and will say okay stretch your hand to me and then Rasulullah said okay Rasulullah will take his hand in his hand and Rasulullah said say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah now say that i will never lie i will never deceive say i will never curse and i will never steal i will never commit zina and then that person will repeat these words after our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
that is bayat now he had pledged allegiance to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam some other people will come and rasulullah will know that this this person has some other <coughs> weaknesses so rasulullah will give them the kalima la ilaha illallah and say okay give me your hand in my hand right and then rasulullah will say say that you will never steal say that you will never commit zina right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documented all these things in quran now let's go back to the 11th year of hijra in the 11th year of hijra rasulullah is in makkah right during the mausam of hajj people from yathrib which was not madina munawwara yet it was called madina was called yathrib mushrikeen came and they used to come to make hajj on the 11th year of hijra six pious souls from madina munawwara from yathrib met rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the uqba in a valley outside makkah and then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave them shahada la ilaha illallah the first six people from madina munawwara after rasulullah gave them the shahada rasulullah sallam took bayat second year 11 uh, so 12th year of nubuwwat not hijra nubuwwat 12 people came how many 12 rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave them shahada and then took bayat but then these 12 people said that ya ya rasulullah there are so many people in in yathrib who would be willing to embrace islam if you can come with us to madina there's a bunch of people there willing to accept islam rasul allah said look i have not been commanded by allah to move and a nabi never does hijrat without the hukum from allah so they said ya rasul allah do something because that people embrace ready to embrace islam rasul allah picked a young man a young boy a teenager musab but so said kam musab go with them to madina you your job is to go to all these people in madina and teach them about islam whoever is willing to embrace islam give him the shahada musab said that ya rasulullah i will go so these 12 people took a guide a mentor with them now Huh? and then in musab ibn umair did such a wonderful job that next year the 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 13th year of nubuwwat 70 plus people came to madina munawwara from madina munawwara they took shahada on the hand of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is called bay'atul uqba al-thalith third one 70 of them rasulullah was so happy that musab did such a wonderful job the people of madina fell in love with musab and they gave him a laqab a title and that title was musab al muqri muqri here means teacher that he is the teacher of madina because of him we got the uh the shahada 70 some people came in the 13th year now, now what did rasulullah do rasulullah took bayat from them rasul asam wa ta'a you should take uh, allegiance with me that you will obey me whatever i will say you will never ever question me asam means that you will listen and you will obey so these 70 some people they took bath again and they said ya rasulullah asam wa ta'a whatever you will order us we are going to Ube. <coughs> Now these people left for, to Medina, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave hukum to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to may, move to Medina in the thirteenth <coughs> year of Hijrah. 
now brothers and sisters in Medina now Yathrib was not known as Yathrib anymore it was called Al Madina Al Munawwara Al Madina means the city Al Munawwara means that is full of Noor Munawwara is derived from the word Noor because Rasulullah have, have, have come so now that city is full of Noor because Wahi is coming day and night to Rasulullah so Al Madina Al Munawwara <coughs> now إِذَا جَاءَ نَسْلُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحُ وَلَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ يَفْوَاجَ Now people are coming in droves, in big numbers to embrace Islam. Rasulullah is doing the same thing what Rasulullah was doing in Makkah. And that is Rasulullah was giving those people shahada but not just shahada. After that, bayat. Bayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ in Surah Al-Mumtahana. Yeah. Ya ayyuhan nabi. Om, om my nabi. Now look at this hadith. Uh, ayah of Quran. Ya ayyuhan nabi. Iza jaakal mu'minat. When these women come to you. And Rasulullah is told that these women are mu'minat. Please underline this. Very important. The Allah is saying that these are genuine female Sahabiyat, Mu'minat. Allah is giving them the certificate that they are Mu'minat. But these Mu'minat, in order to preserve their Iman, what they have, Yuba Yanaka, they are going to take Bayat on your hand. They are, to, they are going to take Bayat on your hand. And the clauses of this Bayat is Allah Yushrikna Billahi Shay'a. وَلَا يَسْرِقْنَا وَلَا يَزْنِينَا وَلَا يَقْتُلْنَا أَوْلَادَهُنَّا وَلَا يَأْتِينَا بِبُرْتَانِ يَفْتَيِّنَهُ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِنَّا وَأَجُلِهِنَّا وَلَا يَعْسِينَكَ فِي مَعْرُوفِ وَلَا يَعْسِينَكَ فِي مَعْرُوفِ Yes, so six points. And then seven. وَالتَّقِينَ اللَّهِ Seven points. And this is in Surah Mumtahina. Second last ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these mu'minat are coming to you to do bayat. They are already Muslims. But they are coming to now pledge their allegiance to you because they became Muslim maybe in their towns or in their villages. This is the first time that they are meeting you, O my Nabi Wasallam. So now when you give them bayat, give them bayat on these seven thing, points. Allah yushikna billahi shayya. Never ever do shirk of any kind with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala yasriqna. Never steal. Wala yaznina. Never commit zina or adultery. Wala yaktulna awladahunna. Never kill any baby. Never kill your children. Wala yatina bibukma. Never accuse anybody, right, of having a bad character until you have proof for that. Buhtan. Wala yaasinaka fi ma'roof. And when your husband asks you to do something, if the husband is right, do not say no. What taqeen Allah? Seven is, is. Always fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah. Inna Allah ghafoor rahim. No doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving and Allah is merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid down these seven points of allegiance to the woman who came to meet Rasul sallam. Then we read Surah Al-Fatah. I think all of you know these ayahs. Inna al-ladheena yubayi'oonaka innama yubayi'oona Allah. Look at the word bayat here. Inna al-ladhina yubayyu'unaka. Inna ma yubayyu'un Allah. Those people who are giving their hand in the hand of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they are pledging allegiance to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah said, it's not that they are giving hand in your hand. They are giving their hand in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a great thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. You are giving your hand in the hand of Rasulullah But what Rasulullah is telling you is what Allah has told him. So it, that is as if you are giving your hand 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yadullah fawq aydihim. The hand of Allah is above their hands. What is that? Pledge of allegiance, bayat. One more ayah regarding this. Same, Surah Fatah. Third last ayah of Surah Al-Fatah. Who knows it? <laughs> Third last ayah of Surah Al-Fatah. I think most of you know it. Laqad radiyallahu anil mu'mineen. And then what Allah said? Iz yubayyu'unaka tahta shajara. Allah said, I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy and pleased. Allah is pleased of all these mu'mineen sahaba who took bayat under the tree. Right? Which is bayatul rizwan, sulayh hudabiyyah. They took a, a pledge that ya, ya Allah, if you ask us to go inside Medina, uh, Makkah will go. Whatever you'll tell us, we'll do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> praised this bayat. My dear brothers and sisters, after Rasulullah left this world, Abu Bakr became Khalifa, right? Every Muslim took bayat on the hand of Abu Bakr Siddiq. Umar, Usman, Ali, Saad, all of them, they took bayat on the hand of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr in two and a half years, oh, oh, sorry, in uh, yeah, two and a half years passed away. Then Umar became Khalifa for 10 years. Everybody took bayat on his hand. Usman radiallahu ta'ala an became Khalifa. People took bayat on his hand. Ali karam Allah wajhu. So this was our golden, beautiful tradition, right? Of pledging allegiance to Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa through a sheikh whom you think is pious. And then going to him, right? And rectifying yourself, cleansing your heart, because you know that you cannot do it alone. You need somebody. It's kind of amusing, brothers. What is more important, your spiritual well-being or your physical well-being? Think about it. Look, no matter how healthy you are, right? May Allah give you health, but the fact is that one day you will lose it. The most handsome person, the most healthy person will lose his health one day, die, finish, right? But the spiritual well-being, ruh, if you have worked on your ruh, that will never die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. An nafs means ruh. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Come back. Come back to your Rabb. Happy. And Allah is happy with you. Fadkhuli fi ibadi wa dkhuli jannati. Into, into my paradise. So this means that the, the, the physical well-being is important, but this is something that everybody loses. Right? But the spiritual well-being is something which if you have worked, right, this will be with you all the time. And the dilemma is that if I ask you who is your doctor, what do you call it? PCP, right? Right? Who is your PCP? Everybody say, well, I have an, this insurance card and look here, my PCP is this. Which is good, mashallah. What is that PCP doing is taking care of your physical well-being. Now you know that it is very important to, to follow the instructions of your PCP. Very, very important. But again, brother and sister, remember, one day you will lose your health. On the other hand, if I ask you, who is your spiritual PCP? Nobody. How do you learn Quran and Hadith on my own? So why, do you, why don't you take medicines on your own? If you are sick physically, why don't you go and just 
go to a pharmacy and say, well, I need this, 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 this medicines. The pharmacist will ask you, where is the prescription? You'll say, no, I know what I'm doing. So no, I need a prescription from a certified doctor. So eventually you will go back to a doctor and you have to see a doctor who will advise you whatever he feels is right for you. But when it comes to your spiritual well-being, we kind of ignore these ahadis. We ignore the tradition of Rasul We ignore these ayats. And we say each one of us is capable of understanding deen. We do not want to give our hand in the hand of any sheikh because I know what I'm doing. This is something, my dear brother and sister, which is very dangerous. But because we are living at a time where the ego of human beings is so strong that we are not willing to give our hand in the hand of anybody, no matter how pious that person is. The most we love to do is listen to a very good speech. You, um, this is a problem, brothers. <laughs> Getting addicted to good speeches is a big, I would say, disease. <laughs> because you are, you just want a good speaker. You want to hear a good speech. That's it. And you hear good speech. If that, if that was your criteria, good speech, you will hear, you will enjoy as long as the speaker is speaking, and then you will go home, no, no change will happen in your, in your life. I give you a point to think. In the last 100 years, all the good movements that have been started in the Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu whether it's Tabliq Jamaat, whether it's Jamaat al-Islami or, or others in, in Arabia as well. Strange thing is that those few who founded these reform movements, they were not speakers at all. They were not speakers at all. Like Mona Eliyah Sahib, he used to stutter. Stutter. But the thing is that that ikhlas was transferred. So the thing is, brothers, don't look for good speeches. Right? What you should do is that look for the message. Anybody can be doing a wonderful thing. I think Sufyan ibn Uyayna, the, the Tabi'i, said something very beautiful. He said, Unzuru ma qal. Wala, ya unzuru ma qal. Wala tanzuru man qal. Always when you are listening, always see what is being said. Do not see who is saying it. Who is saying it? Anybody can say a wonderful thing. I give you a quick example before I conclude. Brothers and sisters, think about our Rasul Sallallahu Khatimun Nabihi Sallallahu right? Wahi is coming to him. Allah is saying, Waman ahsanu min Allah qila. Whose speech could be more beautiful than the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Quran is ahsanul kalam, the most beautiful kalam. Rasulullah is conveying this kalam to the people. And then Rasulullah is telling Sahaba that in the past in, in Arabia, there have been so many great poets, all mushriks before Rasulullah, Jailiya time, mushriks. Among them is Labid, Imra'ul Qais. Rasulullah is sitting, and Rasulullah said, Look, Labid says something so beautiful. Labid said, and Rasulullah narrated that poetry, that Labid, a mushrik, who lived before Rasul Sallallahu Rasulullah Khatim al Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's saying that what a good thing Labid said. al Billah, you could say that, Ya Rasulullah, you have, <laughs> you have Quran. What could be more beautiful than Quran? But what Rasulullah is saying, anybody who had said anything good, appreciate it. 
That was Sufyan, the Tabi'i said, don't see who is saying it, but see what is being said. A Yahudi, a Jew can say a wonderful thing. A Christian, a Hindu, a Buddha, an atheist can say something very beautiful. So just appreciate that what he is saying is beautiful. I'm not approving his aqaid and all that, but what he's saying right now is beautiful. That is the vastness of Rasulullah's uh, way of thinking. Rasulullah was not narrow-minded. But Rasulullah is here appreciating mushrikeen. My dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to our spiritual well-being, well we are very narrow-minded. We are not willing to uh, submit ourselves to a sheikh and make him our mentor, our guide. We are not willing to do bayat because of our ego. Right? So think about it, my dear, dear brothers and sisters. How important it is to, um, to take care of your well-being. And as I'm concluding, I'd like to leave you with this beautiful ayah. Think about, about, about this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah al munafiqun Allah said about people who are healthy, mashallah. Remember, health is important, please. Rasulullah have encouraged people to, do, to be healthy. So I'm not taking anything against having good health. But when the heart is, is sick, then no amount of good health is going to help you. So in Surah Munafiqeen, ayah number four, if you, if you read Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ وَإِن يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ خُشُّهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that these people are physically so healthy, so fit. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm telling you, these people have sick heart. Why? Because they are munafiqeen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you understand these facts from Quran and Hadith. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallah wa bihamdi, and ashuru wa la ilaha 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 ilaha